Good to see you back to another episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, which happens to be our 196th episode. And uh, within the sequence of comparing uh, automobiles to architecture and what kind of one can learn from the other one, vice versa, we're in our uh, volume four with our panels. Uh, from three different parts of the world, three different cultures, three different climates. Me near Munich, Germany, you to Soto back in Honolulu, Hawaii, and you, Ron, in your Long Beach, California. Good to have you guys back. Hello. Good to be back. So it's hard to top what you ended on in the last show because this was like the most romantic you can ever think of as far as cars and how uh, you and your deux chevaux back in France and your experiences there. Um, but I, I can say, I think I can try to get close to that because without a deux chevaux, I wouldn't sit here. I wouldn't see any, I wouldn't sit anywhere because the picture number six on the middle on the right, this is uh, the deux chevaux of my uh, handsome father next to it. And um, he was a, you know, an architectural student, uh, was on his way down to Italy when the Deux Chevaux broke down. And he called his parents and said, hey, can you send me some money? And they said, you're on your own, buddy. And he had to get himself a job in an architectural office, get it fixed. And it happened to be around the time where he can still ski. So he said, I might as well hit the ski slopes. And one of these sort of restaurants somewhere there on the ski slopes, there was this beautiful woman that you see next to him here and her mother and they immediately fell in love on the ski slopes and the rest is history these are my parents and soon after that i appeared on earth so you know if if we would do like statistics here unless uh, de soto you will join us with another romantic deja vu story then we would have 100 percent. but now we have like you know um, 70 Seven percent of you know of majority of that. This is the most romantic car in the world, right? Okay, but wait just a minute here, because in the lower in the lower left corner, the big picture of the bright red car in front of the A-frame house that was taken right next to Kapilani Park at the base of Diamond Head, and in the background is that distinctive house. And as we were talking about the distinctive uh, pared down, stripped down version of the house matches the pared down, stripped down version of the car because both of those are really reduced to their basics. And the A-frame house is just as basic as you can make a house. It just consists of roof, essentially. But standing next to that car in front of the A-frame house is Suzanne. And that is extremely romantic because Martin and Suzanne are going to get married day after tomorrow in Germany in a forest. Uh, Martin will be wearing an Aloha shirt. Uh, first but, time ever. Uh, first time ever. But uh, Suzanne will be clad in her native costume of a dirndl. And um, Ron and I wish we could be there, but we can't because but of COVID. I think you, should, you thing. should sing your song for me again. Okay, please. Uh, you're you getting do it. Married, married in the morning. In the morning. Ding, Ding dong, dong, the bells on shells are shine, shine, shine. Pull uh, out the snow out stopper. Let's we'll have, a have a whopper. But get him to the forest to the on time. On time. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Okay, that's, let's that's get from back. that's from the uh, that's from the movie that's from the play in the movie um, My Fair Lady. All right. So how can we get the turn back to architecture and automobiles now? Ron, you, you want to maybe dwell more on the, the pairing of the, the De Chauveau and the A-frame house that you already touched on, DeSoto, a little bit, but... Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think DeSoto touched on the fact that you're seeing the most basic and simple car and the most basic and simple house all gathered under a roof. Before we go further, I'd like to embarrass... Uh, we've already embarrassed Martin a bit, but I can embarrass <laughs> both Martin and DeSoto because... Uh, there's a saying that great minds think alike. And I just discovered that uh, Martin and DeSoto and the curators of New York's famous Museum of Modern Art think very much and deeply alike. On the 4th of July holiday, 
MoMA is going to open up a, a show called Automania. And the question they're asking, and as we will be asking and perhaps answering as well later, is does the car represent the freedom of the road or is it a harbinger of ruin? That's for later. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's and both. We, I think it's both. Yeah, and that's up for further discussion. But for sure, as far as architecture, there's no doubt that the three of us, this heart is within the inclusive versus the exclusive. And so the De Chevaux is truly a people's car and has been. And it's been made, as we note down there, for like four decades, a little more than four decades, from the late 40s till the early 90s. And that's, that's amazing. At the very top left is actually where the location is, where you can see one that we're sure it's, it's one of the two only ones left or existing on the island. Is there together with another legend, almost like its sibling, its German sibling, which is the German Hübelwagen. And actually, both of them, you guys, Americans, gave them really kind of funny nicknames. Do you want to recall these? Well, the, the Volkswagen was sold in the United States as The Thing in the 1970s. And I don't remember what the De Chevaux was called in the United States. I'll give you just... a hint. An animal. A duck. A duck? But he didn't give it a, a, a very a complimenting nickname. You called it the Ugly Duck. That's oh, the Ugly nickname. Duck. Oh, the Ugly, <laughs> ugly Duckling. Duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugly yeah. Duckling. Uh -huh. Yeah, meaning little, <laughs> little duck. Yes, exactly. Ugly Duckling. Well, and it, it, it's ugly. Yeah, I agree. And, but that, but that, this is, but that's debatable because actually the designer, his name, and as we always want to make sure we. You, we always want to mention the, the architect's name, so we want to mm -hmm. not mention each and every designer's name, but this one here is a special one. His name was Bertoni, not to be confused with Bertone, with an E at the end, uh, but with an I at the end. And he was actually a sculptor, and he did sculptures before he actually started to design cars. So as everything, as art and aesthetics, you know, and beauty is a relative thing, right? That's sort of up for debate, but let's talk about performance and essentiality. And, and you know, I uh, had the camera, you know, next to the windshield and try to take the pictures of the interior and especially the seat. And that brings back some memories again that you already talked about last time, Ron, right? What about this sort of extravagant seed tectonics here? Yeah, I, one of the joys of, of having driven all over France, at least Northwest France and Paris, in that summer between my undergraduate and graduate years, was that the Citroën sort of fluttered up and down the highway. And I say that because when you look at the interior, the seat was actually just a sort of canvas fabric, uh, or I should say the back of the seat was a sort of a cam canvas fabric uh, attached to a metal frame. The seat itself was a wide open webbing of another material, it could have been plastic, I'm not sure, that was also connected to the frame. And then my car doors were also a fabric material uh, framed as doors. And so I have this wonderful memory of driving towards Mont Saint-Michel and the car is simply fluttering inside from all the fabric. Can't get it more essentialist, right? And it also has a relationship almost to Primitiva 3 that we're gonna get to at the very end. But then on another note, I'm gonna add one more a memory here that's a cute one too, but also talks about sort of the, the kind of the goofiness of the car. So you see in the background on, on, on image seven there, this is actually talking getting married and under a roof and Germans require you to, to uh, be married under, you know, under a shelter. This is what they call the golden roof. And it's this sort of attached roof that has golden shingles that's in the city of Innsbruck, which is my mother's hometown. And my parents got married there. And you can see some pretty high mountains there in the back. We're talking Alpine City there, Malka, big times. This is like <laughs> Mauna Kea-ish with the white stuff on there, right? So in order to get over the border back to Germany, where my father is from, that's, what did you say, 26 horsepowers it actually had in, versus the two that the name implies, De Chevaux, two horsepower, something like in the 20s, right? That was not sufficient together with a suspension. So my poor mom in the winter had to get out of the car, 
and sit on the <laughs> fender to put weight on the on the front suspension to get up the hill. No, no, no. <laughs> Talking romanticism and essentialism. And let's see. So we're not. And, and she just, didn't. And she didn't immediately leave him and divorce him after that treatment, which is a good in, sign. In, in fact, we we get to that because you see that man standing next to her on the wedding picture there, uh, next to their Citroen. He wasn't. Her father wasn't very. Wasn't so pleased with the effluence of uh, his former, uh, his future son-in-law. Right. But we return to that story in a, in a funny way <laughs> later. So, so we're not getting stuck on one slide only for this volume. Here, let's go to the next slide, because this is the 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 other model that this guy uh, Bertone designed, and this is the Citroen DS19, and um, this is a very unique car that's even more famous, well, differently famous, we would say. This one, however, was only manufactured or or out on the market for two decades, which is still a long time if you consider today's models that basically after two to three years they make if they even keep the model they give it a total makeover right because of this sort of you know um, fetishism with novelty this one here from the late uh, mid 50s to mid 70s it was manufactured this ds basically is once again as where suzanne is standing in front of it on the picture eight this is in the same museum the pinacotheque de moderne in munich where they have only a few cars uh, your Porsche there, your 911 run that we get to. Then there is an uh, NSU uh, Ro 80 uh, behind that. And then there is a DS just, just past that. And the very top picture is my former house and the former owner, an architect who had his prime time in that era, in the, in the late 50s, in the early uh, 60s. He basically told me that he had two DSs parked in front of the house and the DS was, in fact, the car that if you had, you know, a reputation of an architect, and is not meaning star architect, but the average architect who had, you know, a reputation and pride, you had to have a DS. That, that was the, the synonym for the architect car um, uh, in, in Germany. And uh, DeSoto, um, had you ever seen one before? I think you had. Yes, I had. And I can very strongly remember in about 1965, when I was 11 years old, seeing a Citroen, one of these unique looking cars uh, in Honolulu. When I was a kid coming to, I was during summer school, I was being picked up after summer school ended in the middle of the day. And this car used to also show up to pick up another student. So it was so distinctive looking and it was so unusual that I remember it. Now in the, in the picture, in the Top of uh, uh, just in the top center of, of our slide, that's a picture from a for, from a episode of Hawaii Five O, and so here's one of those cars on the right, but that's not the same one that I remember seeing. Um, this picture was probably taken, or this film was probably shot about ten years after the the one that I remember. The one that I remember was probably white with a black top. So we mm -hmm. had more than one here. But I don't think there was a regular dealer who sold them. This car was probably imported from California, where it was probably originally mm -hmm. sold. And so yeah, it was really unique. The, yeah, and, talk, and talking exotic, right? That's exotic exactly. for you because it comes from the other part of the world. And it also had some features that we will talk about. And Ron, why don't you chip in because you are... Uh, Le Corbusier expert, as you know from the past shows. Talk a little bit about the picture number one at the top left to that regard. Yeah, of course, my memory of Citroën is the little boxy car, the very uh, minimal car, making the most with the least. But here is a Citroën that has begun to become curvy and uh, looking to the future and very organic. And there's nothing more organic coming out of the earth and Corbusier's Ronchamp uh, Chapel, it's the one piece of architecture that when I walked up to it, I actually found myself with tears in my eyes. That's right. You, I remember you saying that. And the one below that, number four, is from the World Expo in Brussels. 
where the car was, you know, they took the wheels off and the axle off and they put it on this pedestal <laughs> just to basically demonstrate how they thought how futuristic it could fly. And the one that below that, the image seven is basically a contemporary one from a marketing company of some young guys who basically labeled this expand innovation. And there it seems it's almost like, like a Hoover craft, like it's floating. And you, you, I made you watch watch basically a compilation of um, funky scenes that, that features its suspension, and also a show that Jay Leno, who's one of the the most uh, you know vintage car collectors, has done about his uh, DS. You want to talk about what you learned from these? Well, one of the things that's really amazing about this car is it has this kind of circulatory system in it like a, a a body of an animal or even a plant in which liquids are pumped through a series of tubes so it's like you've got a heart pushing blood through you and this system allows the car to remain incredibly stable you can take off one of the back wheels and drive the car on three wheels without it tipping over which is an astonishing accomplishment uh, I remember reading that keeping that running and keeping all that liquid flowing was not necessarily an easy thing to do. But when it worked, it was amazing. Yeah. And, and Jay Leno basically says, you know, if you take care of it, it takes care of you. And it's not that complicated. If you don't take care of it, it's get basically going to break. Right. But it take, taking care of there's another legendary story that President Charles de Gaulle, who was running France at that time, basically it saved its life because there was some terrorist attack and they tried to get him and they shot the wheel and it basically the car went on, kept on driving. So it's 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 become legendary. It also came at the little picture and, and as top part uh, right of the picture five, they came up with a station wagon version, which they called the Estat. And there's also this most easy breezy version of the convertible in the center there that actually there is one of the biggest events that shows you the the lure of the exotic of American cars. And this is just sort of an, an exception to the rule because this is a Citroen. But this is part of one of the major events in downtown Hanover in my hometown, which is an American car show. And obviously they're inclusive and invite some cars that are not American, but the majority is basically all vintage uh, American cars there, so so this and, is and one. Yeah. Martin, did you say that this was this convertible was a custom made, or did it come from the factory? Did they actually build convertibles and station wagons, or were those only customized by other uh, yeah. companies? Yeah, Greg, you you remind me of that. There's this guy Chapron is his name, and he was like a master customizer, and he took a couple of these and basically made some interesting different models out of it. I believe from what I read before the show that this one here, actually Citroen, this was a standard convertible that they made, but all the other ones, and maybe this is the Chapon one, I'm, I'm not quite sure. So um, let's uh, move on to the, to the next, uh, which is you could see sort of as the evolution of these things, but, but this one here surprised you too, because unlike the DS that, thank you to Soto, You've probably seen the two that are on the island, but have you ever seen any of these on the island? I doubt very much that I ever saw one of these. And this, again, is a very distinctive looking car. Um, it does resemble, there are some, some similarities to, for example, the Buick Riviera boat tail speedster or the boat tail that they made in yeah. the early 1970s. Mm -hmm. But it does have a very, it looks very futuristic, but it does have a retro touch in that it has um, fender, uh, it's got fender skirts over the back wheel or the body encompasses the back yeah. wheels. That was something which at that time was no longer being done by other manufacturers. Yeah, and this is the 70s, as you already mentioned, the Riviera is actually a great sort of a parallel in, in America for that. And as I was telling you guys in one of the early Courtyard Cabana show we basically did, it was this sort of little, forest neighborhood in my hometown that you know was a little further away so my father drove me there to a friend of mine who had this most awesome grandma there who uh, was this most non-traditional lady and she was driving around in here fiat panda which is by the way also one of the models this uh uh designer design that you ron um learned about today the first time we we're going to talk about them in a couple of shows 
uh, Jujaro, and he basically, um, uh, th there was this A-frame house I was telling you guys, and there was this guy who was a pioneer in in, in bodybuilding and in, in, in nutrition food and stuff like that. And he drove this uh, 928 that we feature there. But next to that was a restaurant and the owner of that restaurant had one of these SMs. And when I was driving by there, I always thought like, this is the most futuristic, unlike any other car. And an article we just wrote before the show was basically someone was saying, this was the Concorde of the cars. And it's probably a good analogy because the Concorde was also so ahead of its time. It was so fast, faster than any, uh, you know, airplane for passengers. And um, it was very uh, fuel consumptive, right? Because here we have to say, where does the, where does the letter uh, M come from in this car, Ron? You want to chip in? Yeah, this, uh, again, because I was just acquainted with, with the boxy one that I had the privilege to drive. The M of all things is stands for Maserati. Yeah, and it had a Maserati engine. So this was a collaboration between two car manufacturers. And so now the, the pictures at the bottom that we pulled from the web, they're actually contemporary architecture, the Swiss modern uh, stuff. And the architects basically, when they do the, the party shots, the money shots, the final photo documentation, they actually rent. SMs to put them in front of their buildings as to use them as a as a as a symbol for being contemporary and cutting edge. And, and that's amazing, right? If you achieve that as being basically and and talking 70s reminds us of Doko Momo and its initiative and basically saying 70s turning 50, right? And uh, unfortunately, there isn't an equal appreciation for architecture, which is mostly brutalism, right? from which the new project at the bottom right is trying to almost be an homage to right, the architecture. This is Beton Bru in the most sense you can get it, right? So once again, mm -hmm. what can we learn from, you know, maybe we change your attitude and appreciate a 70s architecturally just as much as we do here from cutting edge automobiles. Right, right, right. So that gets us to the next slide. And not to forget to mention the designer. This was Mr. Opron, Robert Opron. He designed the SM. And the SM, again, only because it was so avant-garde, it only lasted for five years. And also the oil crisis that hit then, the first one politically caused, didn't really help with that one, um, as the Concorde was dragging on longer, but basically had the same fate. But he basically then, um, you know, sort of was 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 using the SM and took off the edges, literally and figuratively speaking, and made it into the CX that we see there. And and one of the most sort of fancy ways to promote that has to do with this lady we see at the top. And Ron, please tell us who we're looking at here. Yeah, as an indication of just how adventuresome. Citroen was in its designs and in its advertising campaigns. One of the campaigns focused on, at that time, perhaps one could say even now, one of the most dramatic and, and uh, uh, provocative female entertainers in the world. That would be Grace Jones, who is incredibly versatile and she's incredibly androgynous. Uh, up in the upper uh, middle picture, uh, Citroen decided to identify their turbo car that's shown there as Saint Demon. It is a demon, and appropriately, the car is zipping out of a demonic mouth of Grace Jones. <laughs> and those of you who perhaps don't know that much about Grace Jones, uh, and I feel sorry for you, can quickly <laughs> catch up with a documentary biography that was filmed in 2017. And it was called Bloodline. I highly recommend it to see this fierce entertainment personality's life. Yeah. And Who I saw perform here in Honolulu, too. That's right. You said that. We wish mm -hmm. we would have been there, too. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the CX, I was, my, my father actually at some point, you know, he was, you know, had started out his own practice then after that and got some commissions in. So it was always like when there was a job in, we were able to buy a car. And when there weren't any new jobs coming in, you know, the cars got sold. It was ups and down like roller coaster. And at some point, 
when things were going good, my father said, well, let's buy a car. And uh, here again, they made a station wagon and a stud version of that. And my father was thinking about buying one of these or another one that we're going to see later, which he actually bought. And I still sort of regret it because this car, you know, just has more uh, sex appeal and talking about, you know, the exotic. So you guys at least had some, you know, exotic car manufacturers having dealerships as, you know, most of the Germans, you know, VW, which we get to soon, and uh, BMW and uh, Mercedes and you name them, right, and Porsche. But the opposite was not the case because the American car manufacturers had no, close to no dealership network in Europe. So what I was growing up on dreaming about with my little, um, you know, matchbox Gorgi toys cars in the sandbox, which we call Straßenkreuzer, which is the street cruisers, uh, did not exist in reality. I had to envision these and imagine these and use my toys to get me there, right? <laughs> so so that is that is really sort of interesting. And if anything got as close to the big boats in Europe, it was these big citrons here. They, they got as close to that. And as architecture reminds me at the top right, Basically, when my father designed his house for his parents, uh, that house had the same kind of, you know, uh, laid backness and was very sort of low key and very elegant. It was only one story to the street and it was sort of projecting out. So it had kind of the same, you know, you know, peaceful, easy feeling as I know George is watching us as one of our viewers as the Eagles that he's been living close to as to quote that song, because maybe today we're all going to sing more. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, so, we don't need um, to do that. We don't need to do that. <laughs> so anyway, so Mr. Opon, who designed this again, um, this was sold for almost two decades from the mid-70s to, the, uh, to the early 90s. So let's go to the next slide, which is probably our last one we're going to make it to. But I, I want to point out at this point, this is interesting. Uh, that you know, in, in the show about Hawaii 5 O de Soto, we were already comparing the original Hawaii 5 O and the new one that they now recently discontinued, and somehow to the car industry who are basically doing retros, right? They just makeovers of something original. So there's a there's basically the new mini, which has little to nothing to do with being mini, meaning small anymore, right? Same with the Fiat 500, the Cinquecento or even the new Beetle has little to do with the original bug, right? Citroen was always different. So with these big cars, whenever the new model came out, uh, many, me included, weren't sure about what we saw and because we started to like the previous one so much. And so it took us then years to basically get the message and, and catch up with how far ahead they were. And by the time we got it and we got there, they started to bring out the new model, which is really rather sort of risky, right? From, I mean, after all, you want to sell cars, you want to make money of them. And they actually started to make less and less money and they sold less and less cars. And in fact, this is the XM from basically the whole period of the 90s, the last decade in the last uh, millennium, pretty much. And they um, basically then started to lose money and uh, talking about starting to lose, we're losing time now. And so we're already at the end of this show again. So we're going to, you know, tell you more about this. And uh, actually not next week. Uh, we got a little, it's the end of the semester. So we have a really exciting project to share with you that you both know about because you've been in the final review. And we're going to have our, one of our viewers, George, uh, presented to you next week. And then we're going to have the Q&A that you've been part of uh, the weeks after. And after that, we return uh, to look more into the relationship potentially between automobiles and architecture. So until then, stay especially mentally mobile. Bye-bye, guys.